Steve Leonard shop one more time. I'm going to talk a, just a, a quick segment about the Neo Flasher barricades. Even though we did cover this before, but this is you know an old Neo Flasher barricade with the uh, swing panel on it that I got from uh, Brother Tom here. And then this one is another Neo Flasher barricade that I just acquired a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it's a big guy and uh, it's the same concept. It's got the same panel on, on that one. And then on the other side, they have the same concept on both sides of these barricades. And they're probably from the 50s, 60s. Okay, then I've got uh, two Beats barricade lights that I've acquired uh, quite some time ago. This one I just got recently. It's a, well, you got the Beats 665 with a metal guard on it. So in case if you want to uh, knock the barricade over, it was a, a, a lens guard that would protect and serve the uh, lens in case if it fell over. And this is the... Port model number 301-A for this light here, and it's on a, a wooden barricade. And then I've got this one about a year ago. It's a Dietz number 600 with the, with the heavy wire guards on it in case if it got knocked over, it would protect the lens. And this one would also serve as uh, for the uh, Dietz uh, 310 and uh, uh, 304 lens and I, when I when I got this light <clears throat> the inside there was something rattling around inside it and it turned out that it's a key this is a key made by Dietz R.E. Dietz and it's it's got an Allen wrench inside it where some certain barricade lights required a smaller Allen wrench to make contact with the ground to make it flash. Turn it on, you know, you can turn it on or turn it off. And, uh, and to go back to this big uh, uh, thing, uh, guard here, <clears throat> it would also fit the Dietz 650 and the 697. You know, the big lens, big protector, you know. Then this, uh, this old traffic cone I got, it's really amazing, very flexible, made back in the 60s, 50s and 60s. Actually, it was made by Robin Tire and Rubber Incorporation down in Atlantic. And uh, very flexible, good cone, you know. <laughs> and over here, this is my latest uh, find that uh, Brother Tom told me. It's a L.A. County Road Department. You know, they used these back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. And on top of here, it got, you know, in the yellow part here, it's got really fine glass bead where they would paint them. And uh, it re would uh, reflectorize on the uh, on the headlights on the cars. And this is a, you know, a handling, or I'm sorry, an Embry 350 Little Air Pilot later that matches it big time yeah okay then over here I got an old delineator right here <laughs> my dad brought this home to me when I was about uh, oh in second third grade it's made but it was actually printed uh, from the uh, flasher light Riddle Incorporation, and, it's, and this is the uh, Flasher Light Leasing Corporation panel, and the, and the, the panel on that uh, uh, delineator has the same phone number as this panel here, 
So they've been around for a long time. Okay, now I'm going to do a little segment here on the Toledo torch real quick. We've done this before, but these are the early versions of the uh, Toledo torches where they have the, uh, the stem that holds the wick up. Some of the early, early Toledo torches. They had no flame guard protector on there. And then they had a, another model where the flame, the flame guard, you know, as you can notice that this one's got a stem up here and this one doesn't. What happened, as I described before, where so much rain and so much wind would blow these out. And uh, so what transpired, they were doing experiments and so forth. What transpired was, I came across this torch last year. And what Toledo Press Steel Company offered to modify your old torches to make your new torches up to par was an adapter so that the flame wouldn't blow out. So what they did, they, they came up with this concept with a male thread here, with the female thread on the inside. What they what they did was they put a little washer up here, and it was an adapter to modify your old torches to bring them up to par. And you shove this wick down in here. And the early hoods on the Toledos, they had a square oblong hole on the very top. And the threads weren't as thick as the, the later version. But uh, it seemed to be appropriate so your flame wouldn't go out. So it was very unique. It was, a, it was like a two-step part to modify your torches. And then the later ones, this is a cam lock hood. They had the oval top burners. As you can see, this is this is square and this is oval. And so the later uh, torches that Toledo were making, they they went to the oval uh, hoods and so forth. And, uh, and it was just improvements over years of uh, trying to accomplish certain episodes on on highway safety and equipment, you know. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much about the Toledo torches, but this, 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 the laser here, uh, my dad brought that home a long time ago, and it's never been out in the sun. It looks brand new. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right.